Uh, hello, this will be a demonstration of Proposition 22 from Book 10 of Euclid's Elements, which says that if a medial square be applied to a rational straight line, a rational straight line commensurable in square only with the given rational straight line is produced as breadth. This is the converse to the previous Proposition 1021 in just the same way that Proposition 1020 was the converse to Proposition 1019. We are given a medial straight line A. We are given a rational straight line BC. And we are going to apply a rectangle equal to the square on A onto our rational straight line BC. We can accomplish this by finding a third proportional to BC and A. Finding a straight line CD such that BC is to A as A is to CD. Because then we know by Proposition 617 that this will mean that the rectangle contained by BC and CD is equal to the square on A. We'll find the length of CD that way, and we will define its position by simply dropping a perpendicular uh, to BC from C, cutting CD to be equal to that third proportional we just found, and we will complete the rectangle like so. Now what we want to prove in the course of this proposition is that this straight line CD, which is the breadth of this applied rectangle, the breadth of this rectangle applied to BC equal to A squared, that this straight line CD is rational and commensurable in square only with BC. Now because A is a medial straight line, it was given to us as such, we know based on how medial straight lines were defined in Proposition 1021, that there must exist two rational straight lines commensurable in square only, such that the rectangle contained by them is equal to the square on A. Remember, that's how we defined medial straight lines. They are the mean proportional to two rational straight lines commensurable in square only, so that when we're given that A is a medial straight line, it automatically implies the existence of two such rational straight lines whose rectangle is equal to the square on A. And so because the straight line A being medial implies the existence of two such straight lines, let us set out two such straight lines, FE and EC, or EG, my bad, FE and EG, such that they are both rational straight lines, they are commensurable in square only, and such that the rectangle contained by them is equal to the square on A. Now, because the rectangle contained by BC and CD is also equal to the square on A, we know that these two rectangles, BD and FG, must be equal to each other, just by common notion one, because they're both equal to A squared. But when two rectangles are equal, we know from Proposition 616 that among equal rectangles, the sides are reciprocally proportional. So that because the rectangle contained by B, C, and C, D is equal to the rectangle contained by F, E, and E, G. We can then conclude by Proposition 616 that B, C is to E, G just as E, F is to C, D. But when four straight lines are proportional, we know that similar figures similarly described on them are also proportional. In this case, our similar figures will be squares. So that because BC is to EG as EF is to CD, we know from Proposition 622 that BC squared is to EG squared as EF squared is to CD squared. Now remember that BC and EG, they are both rational straight lines. BC was given as rational and EG was set out as rational in our first step. And we know that rational straight lines, the squares on them are commensurable by definition 10.3, which define rational straight lines for us. So that because BC and EG are both rational straight lines, and BC squared is to EG squared, just as EF squared is to CD squared, that BC squared is commensurable with EG squared, and by virtue of this proportion, 
because bc squared is to eg squared as ef squared is to cd squared, we know from proposition 10, 11, which tells us that commensurability transfers across proportion, that because bc is commensurable with e, that bc squared is commensurable with eg squared, that ef squared is commensurable with cd squared. Now, EF was set out as a rational straight line in our first step. So again, we know from definition 10.3 that CD must also be rational because it is commensurable in square with a given rational straight line. So it must therefore also be rational. Now, we've just shown that CD is rational, which is half of what we wanted to prove. Let us prove the second half, that CD is commensurable in square only with BC. EF is incommensurable with EG. We know that EF is, is incommensurable with EG because they're commensurable in square only. Again, we set them out that way because that's what a medial straight line implies. EF is incommensurable with EG. It's commensurable in square only, so it must be incommensurable in length. EF is incommensurable with EG. And furthermore, EF is to EG just as EF squared is to the rectangle contained by EF and EG. This is to be shown in a lemma to be demonstrated after the proposition. So that because EF is to EG as EF squared is to the rectangle EF times EG, and EF is incommensurable with EG, by proposition 10, 11 again, that incommensurability is going to transfer across the proportion, so that EF squared is also incommensurable with the rectangle EF times EG, the rectangle contained by EF and EG. Now, EF squared is commensurable with CD squared. We had shown this in our third step. And the rectangle EF times EG is equal to the rectangle BC times CD. We had shown this in our second step. So that by proposition 1013, magnitudes that are commensurable with each other are also incommensurable with the same. Because EF squared is incommensurable with the rectangle contained by EF and EG, and CD is commensurable with EF squared, CD squared is incommensurable also with the rectangle contained by EF and EG, but the rectangle EF times EG is equal to the rectangle contained by BC and CD, so that CD squared is also incommensurable with its equal, the rectangle BC times CD. But by that same lemma hereafter to be demonstrated, CD squared is to the rectangle BC times CD, just as CD is to BC. And because CD squared was shown to be incommensurable with the rectangle BC times CD, by proposition 10, 11, again, that incommensurability is going to transfer across the proportion. So that CD is also incommensurable with BC. But CD was shown to be rational, and so it must be commensurable in square only with BC, because both of them are rational. They have to be commensurable either in length or in square only. But since CD has been shown to be incommensurable with BC, CD is a rational straight line commensurable in square only with the given rational straight line BC, which is what we set out to prove. So we're done with the proposition. Therefore, etc. QED. Let's, um, let's dwell on that first step a little longer. The straight line A being medial implies the existence of two rational straight lines commensurable in square only whose rectangle is equal to the square on A. Now this proposition does not at all tell us how to find those two such rational straight lines, simply suggesting that they are implied by the existence of a medial straight line A. But what this proposition 1022 gives us is a way to actually find rational straight lines commensurable in square only so that the rectangle contained by them is equal to a squared. We don't have to rely on simply setting out two such rational straight lines commensurable in square only. If we set out one rational straight line, then apply an area equal to the square on the given medial straight line to the given rational straight line, the breadth of that rectangle, in this case CD, will be a rational straight line commensurable in square only, containing with the given rational straight line BC a rectangle equal to the square on A. So in the future, when we have to set out 
two such rational straight lines commensurable and square only, whose rectangle is equal to the square on a medial straight line, this proposition gives us a way to do that. We can simply set out any rational straight line. Then when we apply an area equal to the square on the given medial straight line, we will automatically produce as breadth a rational straight line commensurable and square only, which contains with the given rational straight line a rectangle equal to the square on the given medial straight line. Now I did mention that there is a lemma to these propositions. In steps five and seven, these invoke a lemma to show that, um, excuse me, to show that the ratio that one straight line has to a second straight line is the same as the ratio that the square on the first straight line has to the rectangle obtained by the first and the second straight line. This is a lemma invoked in steps five through seven. And so having nothing more to say about the proposition itself, I will end this part of the video here and move on to demonstrate that lemma. So now let us demonstrate that lemma, which says that a straight line is to any other straight line as the square on it is to the rectangle contained by the two given straight lines. We're given two straight lines, FE and EG. We will also place them in a straight line like so. And what we want to prove is that FE is to EG just as FE squared is to the rectangle FE times EG, the rectangle contained by FE and EG. We will begin by constructing the square DF on the straight line FE, which we know we can accomplish by proposition 146. And then we will complete this rectangle GD. We can do this uh, by drawing parallels to the sides of the square through G and D. We know we can do that, of course, by proposition 131. So let's do that, like so. Now, because FE is to EG, just as the square FD is to the rectangle GD, we know this by proposition 6, 1. These, this square FG and this rectangle GD are parallelograms under the same height because we know that this straight line down here is parallel to the given straight line FEG by construction. And so these parallelograms under the same height are to each other as their bases. The base of the parallelogram DF is FE, and the base of the rectangle GD is EG. So FE is to EG, just as the square DF is to the rectangle GD. Now, FD, the square FD is FE squared, and the rectangle GD is the rectangle contained by DE and EG, so we just substitute those into our proportion and say that FE, say therefore, that FE is to EG as FE squared is to the rectangle contained by DA and EG. But because DF is a square, we know that FE is equal to DE, so that the rectangle contained by DE and EG is the same as the rectangle contained by FE and EG, so we will also substitute that into our proportion and say finally that FE is to EG just as FE squared is to the rectangle obtained by FE and EG. This is what we set out to prove, so we're done with the proposition, therefore, etc. QED. I don't have anything to say about this lemma, no reason to expand or expound upon it, uh, so I'll end the video here and move on to proposition 1023.